This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Welcome back. It is time for Silver and Black today, an Odyssey original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. Also heard in Las Vegas on the Odyssey Sports Station, of course, KDON 101.5 FM, and also the Bet Las Vegas, which is 98.5 HD2. So thank you for our Las Vegas audience being with us. If you don't already subscribe to the podcast, because yes, the show's on once a week in Las Vegas on the radio, but we're on more than that. We're after games during the week. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio and to our YouTube audience or wherever you're watching us. Please subscribe on your favorite platform on video. Hit that subscription button, but also hit that notifications bell so you know every time we have a new video. And I say we, I am Scott Branson, your host, along with my co-host, Mr. Mo Moten. Mo is a senior NFL writer at Bleacher Report, contributor on TNT TV covering the NFL, as well as the Raiders. Raiders. The Raiders columnist up at sportsnot.com. You can follow him on X at Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Gully, and you can catch my work also up on Sportsnot. Okay, we have a 53-man roster. And you know what? As we record this late on Wednesday, there's already been changes, which was part of my theme going in, so it fits perfectly. But the Raiders, their initial 53-man roster, which I said has changed, and we will go over some of those changes as of the time of the show, including, hey, they got a Giants cornerback. Mo, we called for that. No, it wasn't a Dory Jackson. We'll get into who they did get. Also, a running back, a safety. So we got to cut another defensive back. No offensive lineman yet, right? Got a defensive tackle. No offensive lineman yet, but going in, the Raiders clearly, as Tom Telesco said, and we have some sound from Tom Telesco coming your way as well, uh, clearly the Raiders were not done, even though they had to get to their 53-man roster. No surprises really in the cuts. They uh, have signed their practice squad. We'll talk about that as well. But, Mo, I mean, listen, no real surprises for the Raiders. I think some people were surprised by Nathan Peterman, and they thought, well, they'll sign him back to the practice squad. They did not, right? They signed the young kid instead, and they bring him on to the practice squad. And uh, But outside of that, there was no real surprises, um, I think, big surprises. There were a little bit of some. I know you were surprised by one player. Actually, I wasn't surprised by anyone, really. I mean, <laughs> one player, a bit of a surprise. I, I thought they would keep w Christian Wilkerson over Ramel Keaton. That was the only, I guess, small surprise. Small but it's one. Not a, yeah. He's wide receiver five or six behind uh, Tyreek McAllister, who's going to probably be their return specialist. So, I mean, not a big deal there. Ian Rappaport of NFL Network was surprised that the Raiders cut Byron Young on Wednesday. And I, I don't know how long I've been saying it on this show. Byron Young can't stop the run. He struggles to stop the run, and that was his calling card coming out of Alabama. So if you aren't good at what you're supposed to be good at, then why keep that player around? So now I think he does go back to the practice squad. But overall, Scott, as you said, no real major surprises other than keeping a bunch of linebackers. I still think Tyler Eichenberg could be on, the, on some type of injury list before it's all said and done. He didn't play in the preseason, didn't get to see a lot of them. Apparently a lower leg injury. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of Raider fans are wondering why seven linebackers. I'll get into my theory, uh, but just keep in mind that Tommy Eichenberg is not healthy and Moaga is probably going to be a special teamer specifically. Yeah, that was a disappointment. Uh, obviously not being able to see Eichenberg and, and, and most likely will not see him for the first quarter of the season. We'll see uh, unless he gets healthy. But some some some, some claims the Raiders put in on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, Jonah Lau from... The Colts was a seventh-round pick, went to the University of Hawaii, is a Las Vegas kid. He went to Centennial High School in Las Vegas. For those of you in Las Vegas, you know that school very well. So he comes over after uh, – he transferred to Oklahoma State. He started in Hawaii, I should say. And then you also look at uh, um, another cornerback. We talked about uh, – our safety, I should Thomas, say. Thomas Harper. Thomas Harper, which plays safety. He can play cornerback. So we're going to get into this in a minute too because if you look at this Raiders roster, we've talked about this, Mo. Tom Telesco likes versatile players who can do a couple different things. So I think Harper is one of those guys uh, as well. And I really like what he's been able to do. Of course, he's a golden domer too, which doesn't hurt his stock with me. I was going to say, I, wait, I was waiting for that part of it. But go ahead, Scott. <laughs> but we'll talk about, I mean, the reason I like him, and then we'll get into, of <laughs> course, uh, the fact that they also signed Darnay Holmes from the Giants, a cornerback. That's their veteran cornerback. They claimed him. Uh, sorry, signed the free agent. 
and, and got him in. So he's going to be there. And I think he's the guy, he's a fourth round pick uh, originally for the giants in 2020 played in 54 games, 11 starts, 107 tackles, four interceptions. So they get their veteran cornerback, but, but back to Harper a little bit too. Cause I, I was watching real quickly. I went and watched some highlights of him before we did the show, Mo. And what I like about him, and I think it also shows Tom Telesco noticing maybe that the Raiders struggled with the run because he's actually very good against the run. I mean, he's fine in coverage too as a safety, but against the run, he's actually better. So I think that you have somebody there who's versatile. He also can play some cornerback if they need him to. I don't think he will here, but you never know. But um, first of all, addressing that back end, they get a safety and a veteran quarterback. Tell me what you think. I think that's what we all expected, right? So we've been calling for the Raiders to get a veteran defensive back for over a month now, <laughs> right? And they yes, finally yes. they finally get it in Darnay Holmes. Yes, he has penalty issues. A lot of Giants fans are like, oh, I'm glad Darnay Holmes is off the roster. We're not, the Raiders aren't asking Darnay Holmes to be their savior. They're asking him to be the depth, likely at, in the slot position because he played mostly in the slot with the Giants, right? Mm -hmm. So that was expected. With Jonah coming in, who was, by the way, waived by the Colts, he was their seventh-round pick. Um, that was also expected. You talked about it. the run defense was struggling in the preseason, even with the starters out there. Byron Young gets cut and gets replaced uh, by the by the rookie se se seventh rounder, excuse me. And that was also expected. I mean, he's under. I think he's listed under three hundred pounds. But if you if that's your worry, I think when you watch him, if you if you have watched him, pretty good against the run. So it was kind of expected. I believe I said on the last show, the Raiders need a young defensive tackle to come up behind John Jenkins, who's in his mid thirties, because let me tell you, since Jonathan Hankins has left, the Raiders haven't had a, a bona fide run stopper in the middle of that defensive line. Yes. And remember too, with, with, with those two players, or excuse me, with Harper and Lau, they are, they were claimed off waivers, which means they have to stay on the 53 man roster, by the way. Right. So yeah, they automatically at, go to the 50 man roster. They go to the 53 man roster. Now they could, they could eventually waive them as well if they come in and they don't like what they see. But just to say that those, the, I think Tom Telesco, obviously going back to the charger bin and pulling somebody out of player. He knows very, very well. It's expected. It happens every time a GM goes from one team to another. So it's, it's nothing unusual that happens there. And then you look also Mo at um, the, the Raiders practice squad. Not a real surprise there. Carter Bradley, as I said, is he's obviously the Raiders right now. Again, things could change in the next few days, and I and I think they will. I don't know about the quarterback position, but he is their third quarterback right now on the practice squad uh, as well. They signed Matthew Butler back, Jalen Guyton back to the practice squad, Sincere McCormick. Some of these games you know really well. Charles Snowden, I know folks. some folks really wanted him to make the team. He's there. Everybody's favorite, Dalton Wagner, of course, is on the <laughs> practice squad as well as Sam Webb and Christian Wilkerson, who you mentioned earlier. So you look at this, this Raiders roster as of today, and again, by the time this show airs Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, I'm sure we'll have more changes, so it'll only last a few hours. But uh, the one thing that Tom Telesco talked about, they asked him about the roster. Our good friend uh, Q Myers over at Raider Nation Radio asked the first question of the press conference yesterday after the, the roster cuts were made, and he asked him, did the new kicking rules, did the you know special teams, because Antonio Pierce had talked about the, the need to make sure they had good special teams and that they'd keep some of those players to, to play there. Um, but they, he asked him about that, and uh, I want to play that sound for you here. Here's Tom Telesco talking about the kind of makeup of the roster. This was as of yesterday, of course, but here's what he said. This is kind of the starting point. Um, of where we are but um yeah i mean a little bit heavy at linebacker right now um but i think just across the roster you know whether it's the new kickoff rule or not um as you get towards the back end between you know 45 and 53 there has to be a pretty big special teams rule there for those players um so that always you know that always uh, you have to take that into account as you put this together for the initial list um but uh honestly with, with the kickoff rule and the players that are going to be used uh, in that fashion uh, we still have to see how it plays out um, now in the regular season when it's for real and see what teams are doing and see how it goes. But uh, yeah, this is just how it played out right now. So there you go. And, and the main reason I played that was, yes, he's talking about how the, the new rules affect roster building very, you know, a little bit, not a lot. 
is this idea that look this is where we are today and that was yesterday and we know obviously on wednesday it changed or wednesday it changed too and today on thursday i'm sure it'll change again and friday <laughs> going into next week right prepping for week one against the chargers um but but Mo, I, I i think that we knew that going in i think you saw where the raiders had some weaknesses had some big question marks that run defense the back end Offensive line, which he did talk about as well on Tuesday, where he talked about the versatility of those guys, which I think is, again, something we've talked about for several, several weeks here. But uh, this this roster, how he has it built right now, I think it's going to change. I think we're going to see three or four more players at key positions come onto this roster. I still wouldn't be surprised if they added another offensive lineman or even another defensive back, in my opinion. I, I yeah. just... With the linebacker position, as I mentioned, I just don't feel like Tommy Eichenberg is ready, and him not being ready could factor into their into their decisions. Now we saw or we heard about Brendan Faison being moved to IR. Mm -hmm. He initially made the fifty man roster. A lot of writer fans are like, how does Faison make the roster? He did appear at practice, according to Vinny Bouncing and other beat reporters. He was at practice, but they put him back on IR on Wednesday. So. Just keep in mind that more players could be moved to IR just because they made the initial 50-man roster doesn't mean they're ready to go. We saw that with, with Faison. Now, Tom Telesco had a comment during that presser that kind of irked me a bit when he talked about Faison having a rough couple of weeks. A rough few bad weeks. luck, he called it. Yeah, bad a, a bad run of luck for a few bad weeks. And I'm like, it's it's been a it's been a bad run of luck for about two years with Brandon Faison. Yeah. And I'm not here to bash the guy. I hope I wish him well. I hope he gets healthy and fine. But if you're talking about trying to win now, remember when Antonio Pierce named QB one? He said, talked about the Raiders being up to a fast start. Yeah, that's a that's a that's kind of a synonym for we need. We're trying to win now. And if you're trying to win now, you know why hold up a roster spot or an, you know or a spot for a guy who's just not available? Now they moved him to IR, which made perfect sense. Uh, but we'll, you know, hopefully he gets back. Hopefully he can contribute. I just want to remind people for those asking why he's on the roster. Remember, Tom Telesco signed Brandon Face in, I believe, 2017 as an undrafted rookie. So there's a connection. There's a previous relationship between Telesco and Faison. Now, you don't want to yeah. hear the politics of these situations, but the truth of the matter is when you know a guy, when a GM knows a player, when a coach knows a player, that player is going to get a little more rope than a player that's not associated with that GM or coach. We talked about Darnay Holmes. Who did he play under? Patrick Graham. So we yeah. got to connect the dots with a lot of these players and coaches and GMs. Absolutely. And I think, too, I mean, look, they did they did wave MJ Devonshire. He was not signed to the yep. practice squad. So clearly yep. um, not didn't work out. Seventh-round pick. I mean, you don't, you don't expect those guys to always stick. I know we saw some good things from him. Uh, and we thought maybe he might be a, one of those guys who could make the roster or at least the practice squad. And they may sign him back to it depending on what they do in other moves. So we'll see how that goes. Because remember, this is not final. You still got a week left before, or a little less than a week before you got to get the, that that roster set for that. Of course, you talked about the Byron Young release. Uh, what I was interested in too was one of the questions. So you look at this roster and I think, you know, most, and we got some calls later, by the way, we're going to get to the Raider Nation mailbag in the final segment of the show, but you get to this and, and, and there was a question about, Hey, how do you feel about this roster? You know, you know, you now, now you have your guys and yeah, you're going to have a few here, a few here change out, but overall, how do you feel? And I got to be honest with you. I, I don't, I don't want to taint the audience here, but Tom Telesco's response had me a little perplexed and here it is. Here's Tom Telesco talking about his roster and what he feels like this team could be this year. Uh, I, that's a tough, that's a tough question. Um, yeah. It's, it's just a hard question to, to answer I, until we start playing regular season games and until we get to maybe week three or four, when we have a really good feel for where we are on both sides of the ball and special teams, I may have a better answer for you then. Um, but right now, every year is different and new and unique that, you know, this year's Raiders team is completely different than, than last year's team. And that's just natural in this league. You know, there, there's a high turnover rate. So we have a lot of new players right now, whether they're, whether you're a younger player or a veteran player. And this team, this 2024 team now has to come together as one. Uh, we've done that at training camp. Uh, I thought we got some great work being away at training camp in Costa Mesa. Now we're back here in Las Vegas. Got to continue it on. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got a mix of some, 
you know, some veterans. We got some mix of some younger veterans. We got some mix of, of some younger players. So we're going to try and mix it all together and see how it works out. Okay. So there you go. Tom Telesco when asking about his roster. Now, Mo, this, this confuses me a little bit because, you know, you don't expect – you don't expect a GM to go out and say, oh, man, this roster is a freaking Super Bowl winner. Like, you don't expect him to, to, to go over the top about it. But I was, I was a little – I get it. Like, you don't know what you have until you get on the field. No question about it. But in the NFL, how do you feel going into the season? And to me, that was a whole lot of, oh, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> and it's like, I get it. He came in. He inherited stuff, inherited a coach, that kind of deal. But – it, it just it it just kind of raised my eyebrows a bit in the way he kind of couched it. Yeah, you don't know what you have to hit the field. So it's fair. I'm not unfairly criticizing the man, but I was just a little struck by his response and the kind of hemming and hawing. Maybe he was a little too honest. I guess you're <laughs> you, we're used to, we're Imagine used that. to hit right. We're used to hearing coaches, you know champ up their roster say you know we're you know we got the guys we need to you know make a run or make a playoff run or you hear the rah rah stuff maybe that's just tom telesco's personality he's not here Could to be. shine uh rainbows and unicorns and, and and give you all the fluff stuff the, all the coach speak all the positive optimism maybe he's just again being a little objective like we are in our show saying look we don't know we don't know what we what we got right now we have to wait to see the product on the field for for me to judge but i guess if you're an optimistic raider fan you'd rather hear the yeah we got we got the guys we need to 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 win several games you'd rather hear that when yeah. you hear his honest response is like well if he doesn't sound as confident why should i be confident in this roster so i get both sides of it but maybe that's just his personality as a GM where he's not going to sell you something. And, and then you turn back and say, well, Tom Telesco in August said this, this roster was pretty good. <laughs> what happened? Right. So he's, he's given maybe he's given himself enough to say, look, I told you back in August, I wasn't really sure we had to see. And now you get to see it. It's not that good or mediocre. We'll find out. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have Ryan Dyrud, by the way, from LA football network. Uh, they cover the chargers. So we'll have him on next week. And, and when we're previewing the game, we'll get to ask him these questions. Cause he dealt with Tom Telesco for five years um, as, as with his site. So he'll be able to give us some insight there, but yeah. And I agree. I mean, look, I, I, if he's just telling the truth, maybe he was just setting expectations too. Right. Which is fine, but man, it just, it was weird. I guess for me again, I, I'm not trying to read too much into it because, like you said, it could be his personality. I'm not used to his person. He is a pretty quietly spoken guy. He's not exactly yeah. gregarious and all that stuff. He's he's that guy, and that's totally fine. Everybody's got different personalities, so we'll see. But it just kind of like, bing, like that went off in my head when I was watching the presser yesterday uh, on Tuesday, and and so we'll see where it goes. All right, we'll, we'll pick up the discussion around that. We got to take our first break here on Silver and Black today. When we come back, we'll continue that discussion around this team, the expectations. We'll also talk about, you know, what else are they going to do? We, we talked a little bit about maybe another offensive lineman, but that versatility thing, I want to go into that too, uh, Mo, because you've talked a lot about that too, not only in your writing, but here on the show, especially when it comes to that offensive line when we come back. This is Silver and Black Today. You're with Mo and Scott. We're coming back right after this. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. Welcome back. Segment number two here on Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast, also heard on 101.5 FM KDON and 98.5 The Bet HD2 in Las Vegas. All Odyssey stations, of course. Scott Branson, Mo Moten back with you. We're talking about the Raiders. Before we went to the break, we were talking about Tom Telesco and in, in the in the in the the, the, the soundbite I played you around him, just like, ah, oh, I don't know how we're gonna be. We gotta see how they get in the field, and then we'll see. So Mo, there's the one thing again, and, and we we talked about it in the previous segment that maybe it's a little bit of personality, and that's fine. And, and and you referenced the fact that on this show we've been pretty objective about it. You picked the Raiders with seven wins or so, uh, and and I haven't done my picks yet, but we will. And I think too that it's a good sign for fans out there, and it's something that I said a couple shows ago, which is I if I were if I were Raider fans again, you do what you want to do. You should be optimistic. You said that last show. 
But at the same time, be cautiously optimistic. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. They go on a three-game win streak. Awesome. If they go on a three-game losing streak, don't get too depressed. Like, I think that that's where that ro this roster is. There's so many good pieces on this roster, but then there's also some question marks and big ones, including the quarterback position. So I think going in, that's sort of how I feel about the team. Like, I'm not negative about them. We asked the question last show, are you pessimistic or optimistic? There's a lot of op optimism, and there's some pessimism as well. But I think overall, it's just going to be that. It's going to be an up and down year. From the responses that we got, a lot of people are in between seven and nine wins. Yeah. Right. And I think that's kind of where we are, where we believe like the ceiling is maybe nine, <laughs> where the floor could be, you know, six or seven if things don't go right at the quarterback position. So I, you know, I, I, I get it. But we, to take a page out of Tom Telesco's press conference uh, <laughs> playbook, we don't know we're going to get till the season gets here. We don't know how well Gardner Minshew is going to gel with these players. It's his first year with, with uh, this offensive personnel grouping. You know, how does Amir White look as a full-time running back? We'll find out. How does the offensive line gel? That was a big question that I wanted to get to today, and we'll probably get to it in one of our calls, was how long will it take for the Raiders' offensive line to gel? And that's I think that's something that needs to be talked about a lot more simply because the Raiders have moved around some chairs on the offensive line. Let's remember Dylan Parham is moving from left guard to right guard. Thayer Mumford Jr. is now the full-time right tackle. You know, Cody White here is now the left guard. Eventually, you would hope that Jackson Parrish Johnson takes over that position. So they have essentially two new faces, well, one new face, and three new starters in different spots. So Dylan Parham again moving, Thayer Mumford Jr. being a full-time guy. So that offensive line group, could could determine how well that offense performs because as I said, regardless of who the quarterback is, you got to be able to protect them and you got to be able to open lanes for your ball carriers. Yes, and and also remember, look, I know he's got a clean bill of health, and 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 God bless him. Knock on wood. Hope everything's good. But Colton Miller had surgery, so he comes in, he's healthy right now, but you just don't know, right? So there's a lot of question marks there. But one of the things they talked about, and if you look at the roster, and you just mentioned these guys moving around. One of the reasons they're able to do that is because they do have in that offensive line room, Mo, a very diverse and experienced, uh, in most cases, uh, offensive line that is versatile. You have guys who can play two, even three positions. Right. And that was one of the things that I wonder how they were going to handle with Andrews Pete. So now a lot of Raider fans are saying, why is Andrews Pete on the roster as of Wednesday? That could change, but right as of Wednesday, Andrews Pete is on the roster, and we talked about how he is not a good fill in left tackle. We saw that in the preseason. But as I said, I believe in the last show, if they keep Andrews Pete long term, the reason you keep him is because he can also be a backup guard where he played most of his career with the Saints. He was not a left tackle for most of his time in New Orleans. He only played left tackle his last year before he became a free agent and signed with the Raiders. For about eight, nine years, he was a guard. And I think that's the vision for him going forward is that, okay, if Cody Whitehair continues to go on a decline, if Jackson Powers Johnson isn't ready, if Dylan Parham doesn't have a smooth transition from the left to the right side of the line, we can insert Andrews Pete, who's a veteran guard, uh, to play there. And you won't have to worry about him going up against edge rushers and giving up sacks and pressures. He'll be on the inside where he'll face up against some three technique defensive tackles who can pressure the quarterback. But he won't be a liability on the edge against some of the better athletic defenders who are coming after the Raiders quarterbacks. Yeah, and it's – boy, I'll tell you. The, and that's where those question marks are. It's just all the things that you just mentioned, I think, are what you have to look at and understand when you look at this team. But now, on the upside, everything could gel quickly. You know, things – it happens. I mean, it does happen. And so if the Raiders do that, if Gardner Minshew is playing his best football – right then suddenly that offense clicks now on the defensive side are they able to, to to stop the run can they get max crosby free can malcolm Kuntz do what he's done in the past i mean these are all questions every team faces right because you're going to look at it and say can this player do what they did last year and of course christian wilkins the same thing so so there's there's optimism there and i just again to close the loop on it the the, the tom telesco thing like you said it could be personality but uh it just kind of it just my eyebrow went up uh, a little bit with that, but we'll see. And maybe that's because he's not done with the roster yet either. He might be saying, Ooh, I need to go get somebody. And, and I still think that they might go get, like you said earlier, another cornerback, another offensive lineman. I would imagine an offensive lineman. Yes. They got, a, they, they have guys there, but there's some, 
there's some more opportunities out there to improve. And then you don't know, they might be working a trade too. Trades happen right now too, before week one as well, as we've seen. So we'll see how that all works out. But um, I, I just think that if you look at the needs they had going into the draft, they tried to do uh, to address those. Most of the guys they drafted made this team. Uh, it, we talked about Devonshire being waived. But if you look at it, that's good because the reason the Raiders have the holes they have, frankly, is because they've had poor drafts. So Tom Telesco came in. This is his first draft. And so far, we'll see if these guys contribute. But overall, Mo, that's why they find themselves in this position was because of the Dave Ziegler's and the John Gruden's and where they were when he came in. The cupboard was, yeah, you got some great pieces in here, but you also got some holes. Just looking at the wire and seeing Alex Leatherwood get released by the Chargers, I was like, man. <laughs> His third or Raiders. third team? Third team. Third, because he was with the Bears for a little bit last yeah. year. It was just like, it was just a reminder that, man, the Raiders had stockpiled all of these picks, right? Remember, they trade Amari Cooper, you mm -hmm. know, they trade Khalil Mack, and you're thinking, okay, they stockpiled all of these picks. And usually when you do that, you're able to rebuild a lot faster because you're getting these high picks, uh, these high pick players. And they squandered a lot of them. I mean, just look at, just most go down a list. Most of them didn't get a second contract. You know, you can look at Cleve Farrell. I saw Jonathan Abram get released not too long ago from the Saints, Saints. again. Yeah. It, it, you know, Josh Jacobs did what he did. He had some good times, but, you know, he didn't get a, a second long-term deal. Goes to Green Bay Packers. He's the lead guy there now. But it's, it's kind of like, it's just a reminder, as you said, if you don't draft well, then you have to fill those holes with you got to try to hit on a, a guy that you poached off of someone's practice squad, a Darren Waller type <laughs> pickup. You gotta you gotta hit on a late round pick. You gotta overspend. You gotta overpay for free agents. You don't want to do all that stuff because then it, it it limits your cap space flexibility. Now, fortunately for the Raiders, they don't have any cap space issues right now. Right? They got mm -hmm. they got the money where they can sign a play if they want to. I, I think they're more looking at 2025 than this year to splurge. They did spend a lot on Christian Wilkins, but notice they didn't do much big spending after Christian Wilkins. No. So to me, it's kind of a look at, let's see what the roster looks like. Tom Telesco, I'm channeling my inner Tom Telesco here. Let's see what I inherited. And then we'll figure out the other holes after the season. Now I'm not saying that this season's a wash, but you want to see what no. the guys can do that were already here before you start making wholesale changes. You're right. And I think as well, we've talked about this before, which is, yes, things can't go horribly wrong for, for Telesco or for Pierce, but this year is kind of a, a gimme year. I look at it, right? Because you, you came in, you've taken over, you got to get the, the team built in, in Pierce's image, in Telesco's image. That takes time. You can't do that in one draft and one free agent class. You just can't. So knowing that going in, you got to give them a little grace there. As long as things are progressing and you see progress, hey, if you're if you're short at cornerback and and it just shows up all year long, so be it. It's just the way it is. So you got to address it. You couldn't address everything. So I look at that and I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's fine. You you gotta you gotta roll with it and keep going. And I still think too, you know, the running back long term. Do we know Zamir White can be the guy, or at least him and Madison be the guys together? We don't know yet. We don't know. So we'll see. I think there's an opportunity for them to maybe add a running back as well. We'll see what happens with the waiver wire and who's available out there and if they're interested in anybody. So far, they haven't, but we'll see. Um, but it'll be interesting, man. I think that this this next few days rolling up until the team starts practicing next week for week one in Los Angeles will be interesting. We'll see what he's able to do. And I, like I said, I do not think he's anywhere near done. Really quick, Scott. One thing I am excited about, yeah. and I can say this for sure, I'm excited about the special teams unit, the return specialists. You, you talked about Tyreek McAllister, Trey Tucker, DJ Turner. The Raiders mm -hmm. may have one of the league's top return specialist group with that trio, with the new league rules encouraging more kickoff returns. The Raiders can really take advantage of those new kickoff rules and give their offense good field position. And if those guys can do that, it makes it a lot easier on the offense to punch it in for six and not settle for field goals. Agreed. And I think with that new kickoff, now we'll see how it plays out in the regular season. You know, are people going to be kicking differently because they don't want the returns? Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. But you're absolutely right because people forget about all three phases of the game. And we know special mm -hmm. teams from, from obviously Carlson, you, having a kicker like that, having a punter like that. Yes, the Raider fans love those guys. 
But now you have legitimate threats on the kickoff return and the kick has changed it to benefit that. So we'll see how it goes out. Good point uh, on that one. All right, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to get to your calls here on Silver and Black today and Odyssey Sports Original Podcast heard on KDON and The Bet in Las Vegas. Don't go anywhere. All right, now for our video audience, i got to get to our good friends at BetUS. Mo, I'll tell you what, I, I had a dream about a team. Uh -oh. I had a dream about a team. Uh, uh -oh. And 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 it, it, it's one of those deals where, oops, I got the wrong screen on here. Um, it's one of those deals where I, I looked at it and I said to myself, wow, I, I need to bet this. So if I'm going to bet on sports, Mo, I don't know. I, I know you're, you're doing a lot more picks this year. We're going to do picks on this show starting next week where you and I go against each other. But if you're going to bet, go to our friends at BetUS. I'm telling you, not only do they have uh, great payouts and, and, and great customer service, you can even get a personal account manager there. It's crazy. But uh, you want to bet on anything. Of course, NFL football, you can do same-game parlays. You can do in-game stuff that you're all used to doing. Uh, and it's awesome because no matter where you're at, you can get into this. And I'll tell you what, I just had this dream, okay? And so I'm going to go in as we're doing this, Mo. I'm going to go in. Let me take this off the screen here so people can actually see us too, maybe. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm, I'm going in. I'm going to bet a future. If you remember last show, I bet the Raiders over for, for 100 bucks. I bet the Raiders over on wins, right? Mm -hmm. At six and a half. 150 bucks. 150 bucks. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing with my own money. Uh, okay. So so I'm looking at regular season wins, and I just had this dream because everybody's hyping. You ready? Everybody's hyping the Chicago Bears because Caleb Williams and all oh, they got uh -oh. receivers. Oh, they got uh, – uh, uh. have you seen uh – -uh. and I'm going to use my good friend Kelly Kreiner's word here – what trash they have at offensive line? Now, Cody Whitehair uh -oh. came over from the Bears. I'm not saying he's an all-pro guy, but man, that offensive line is terrible. I was watching it. I was watching a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to watch film on teams, and Bears are getting a lot of love. I don't know because of Caleb Williams, I think. But dude, I'm going. I'm going under here, eight and a half wins, and I'm doing fifty bucks. So I'm I'm pretty confident on this, right? So I'm gonna place that, this bet as you can be see. Go ahead. That's going to be our first disagreement of the year. Interesting. Uh, that, that'll that have to be the disagreement, but there you go. So I bet 50 bucks there here on BetUS. Again, you can find a link below. Go check them out. Make sure if you're looking for a sports book this year and you want to find a good place to bet, this is the place. Not only do they have a the football, dude, but you can bet on the presidential election. You can bet on almost everything down there. Of course, hockey will start pretty soon, but you got politics, boxing, name it, whatever. But I'm telling you, BetUS is the place to do it. Mo and I both associated with them. Really happy to be partners with them this season. And uh, go make sure you do that. You get a nice bonus if you sign up using the link below in the description. And we've even pinned it to the first comment here on the show. So do that. Our good friends from BetUS. All right. We are back here on Silver and Black today. You know what time it is. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. That, that, that black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right. And you guys are blowing us away again. So many calls. We're not going to be able to get to them all today. We are going to start next week. As I mentioned, we're going to start when we get into the season, we're going to do an all male show because you're getting so many calls in and we don't want you guys to get angry that you're not getting on the air. Don't get angry if you don't hear yourself today, but we will get you on. We'll do another segment. We'll do an all male show like we used to do last year during the season because especially We'll probably do it earlier in the week, Mo. I think people want to comment after games, right? Right? Yeah, that's when people are mostly fired up, whether it's a win or a loss. People want to say, oh, we're not going to win another game this season, or we're going 17-0. <laughs> They're taking a page out of Murph's playbook. Actually, 19-0 yes. if you're Murph. But uh, <laughs> that's the time when you want to talk to fans when they're fired up after the game. That's when they have their, their fiery hot takes that we want to hear on this show. 
All right. Well, we got about 11 minutes or 12 minutes to get these in uh, because we are obviously on the radio today as well with this show. So we're, we got that tight clock, but here we go. Our first caller is coming from dark side 209 who we know from, from X and some other places. Let's yeah. see what he has to say. I believe, well, 209 is in the central Valley. Hey Scott. Hey Mo, this is dark side 209 calling from Winston, California. This is kind of a redo from the previous call that I made earlier. Um, I had a, just a few observations from the final roster uh, being announced today. I've seen that Brandon Faison made it, and uh, I was under the impression that he was uh, injured, but apparently he's already practicing with the team. So my hope is that since he's a veteran and he has a year underneath the Patrick Graham system, that he'll go ahead and help out the younger cornerbacks that we have. And I'm assuming he'll provide decent depth since he's a veteran. And the other thing is, too, is since we're running the uh, 12-man personnel, uh, I was kind of surprised that they only kept uh, three active tight ends on the roster. So maybe they'll pick one up on the waiver wire or sign Gentry or Cole Fotheringham uh, to the practice squad since um, I think we need more than three guys active for that position just in case if uh, Bowers, Mayer, or uh, Brian get hurt. So, yeah, pretty much uh, just want to know what your thoughts are regarding those two uh issues and go Raiders. All right. There you go. Dark side 209. Appreciate the call, man. And Mo, I think it, we, we talked earlier, so we won't rehash it, but we talked earlier about obviously Brandon face on uh, two games, right? Right. In, or four, 44, four. what was it? Two, two out of the last 44 he's played. Well, he's played three. He played three. He, have, he suited up for three games last year, but the man played like Fewer than 50 snaps. Like yes. it wasn't even enough. Time. That was 44 snaps. That's right. That's what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. So so you look at that, and then they go sign Darnay Holmes. Darnay Holmes, though, not an outside guy, right? He's mostly a slot guy. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think they're still going to sign somebody else. They don't have, I mean, they had he's obviously a veteran. He knows the system from Patrick Graham, but I think they they probably still in the market for that outside cornerback, a veteran who might be on the on the street. I mentioned that in the first segment that I still think they're going to add another cornerback who can line up mostly on the outside. Wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me. I'll get to Dark Side Twenty Nine. By, by the way, shout out to Dark Side Twenty Nine. He shows up at mostly all of my BR live shows. Yes. So I want to thank Dark Side Twenty Nine for for participating in my BR shows. You've been great there. Keep commenting. It's great for the show over there as well. But I'll get to the tight ends. Uh, a lot of our fans were surprised the Rays didn't keep four tight ends because they're going to run a lot of multi tight end sets. Uh, they did keep. John, what is his name? Sorry. John Samuel Shanker on the Shanker. practice squad. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't retain Zach Gentry or Cole Fotheringham. They have Shanker there, who was there with him in the preseason. So um, he'll probably get the call up if someone gets banged up. But I, I didn't have four tight ends on my 50 men that chart simply because I think with these tight ends, it's not a high demand position. So you're not worried about teams yeah. poaching your, your fourth tight end. Uh, so you can keep that tight end on the practice squad and just call them up when you need them. Right. And for special teams, they went heavy on linebackers, which I, you know, I get that's fine too, as well. So we can do that. All right. Dark side 209. Thanks. Next, we're going out to Michael. Hi, TLV Gully and Mo Moten. My name is Michael Westry and I'm from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I am truly, truly, truly a Raiders fan. I've been one ever since 1968. Woo, 55 years. And so my question would be, is how come we don't get a viable running back to go along with Zeus? I know Amir is pretty good in what he does, and the rookie, you don't know about him, and McAllister, I think they got him listed as a wide receiver. Please give me a uh, shout out and let me know why McAllister is a wide receiver and not a running back. Thanks. Ray, go Raider Nation. Raiders. <laughs> All right, there you go. New caller, Michael of North Carolina. Thanks for calling in, my man. I appreciate that very much. Um, I, I brought. I mentioned it earlier, right, about a running back and the fact that the Raiders might need a running back. They have Alexander Madison there as well, uh, and I think they're comfortable with what they have, but – at the same time, Mo, he asked about McAllister being listed out there as a wide receiver. Um, I'm not sure why, I, unless that's just where they're listing him as as his position. As of now, they don't plan on playing him uh, as a straight halfback. 
Well, this is my response because I went over this a little bit in my Bleach Report Live. Mm -hmm. They can use McAllister in many different ways. I, I think he's going to primarily be their return specialist, but I wouldn't be surprised if they put him out there on gadget plays, you know, end around like they do with Tucker. sweeps. Like you, right. And I, and I think they'll use him in that way. You won't see him a ton, but I think he'll get his touches. Uh, as a as a versatile type player where you he may be in the backfield he may you know he may be in motion at wide receiver now I, again mostly a specialist but he's a type of player with his type of speed you can use him in so many different ways so while i wouldn't get too hung up on him being listed as a wide receiver just know that if luke gets gets in his bag and he exercises his creativity he should be able to use tyreek McAllister's speed in so many different ways. So I think with the running back position, now, as you said, as you think, Scott, they may add another veteran running back. Who knows? But I will say that, you know, they spent a decent chunk of change on Alexander Madison. And yeah. it's a sign that they believe that Alexander Madison could be the one-two punch along with Zeus. So that that shows a lot of confidence in Madison being RB2. And then Amir Abdullah, as you know, is the pass-catching running back as an RB3 with Dylan Lowry learning behind him in the same role. That's right. Michael in the Tar Heel State. Thanks for calling in, man. Don't be a stranger. Now we got to Ryan in the land of Titans, Fullerton, California. Here we go. Hey, guys. Ryan from Fullerton, California. Uh, Mo, you might know me as Vibestrong from X and some of your Bleacher Reports. But anyways, um, I want to mix it up a little bit. I'm seeing too many Raider fans being negative going into this season. Um, I'm feeling a lot more optimistic going into this year than I did last year by a lot. Um, but I wanted to see your thoughts on this. So hear me out a little bit. Raiders exceed their expectations. They go against all odds. They stay relatively healthy throughout the year. I'm not. I'm not going to go overboard, but let's just say they were to get 10, 11 wins, and they get a wild card spot. <laughs> In your opinion, what positional unit and positional player were the biggest contributors to that success? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not going to go. For me, I'm not going to go with, you know, the QB. It's too obvious. Um, but I'm going to go with the O line and Jack Jones. I think if the O-line stays healthy and they get better as the year goes on, you know, JPJ comes back into the mix. He plays how we all think he can play. Um, Thayer and Glaze, I think maybe they rotate a little bit, but overall they played pretty well. Um, they get the run game established, and, they, you know, it opens up the pass game. They utilize all those weapons they have. Um, for Jack, I think he's going to have maybe a similar year to what Trayvon Diggs did a couple years ago, where, you know, he makes a bunch of plays. He gives up some, but he makes a bunch of plays. Um, and I'll make a prediction on him that I think he's going to have the single most interception since Nambi off him on back in 06 where he had eight. Wow. But, um, anyway, guys, uh, I appreciate the time and curious what your thoughts are. Go Raiders. There you go. And Mo, uh, I know we're, we're getting tighter on time here, but I'll uh, just real quick and I'll let you answer too, which is, uh, yes, offensive line, uh, and yeah, the defensive back, I think Jack Jones is going to be fine. I think the defensive line's performance, both against the run and the ability to rush the passer, is the second piece. And then, oh, by the way, quarterback. Quarterback, 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 too. I yeah. would say that. Yeah, he, he said he didn't want to go with the obvious quarterback answer. <laughs> but, it's, but you are, but, but you know, obviously. But it, I, I, I like your point about the uh, defensive line. I talked about the offensive line in the first segment. I said people yeah. aren't talking about it enough. So I do agree with the caller on that one. But I'll also add in tight ends. I think the mm. tight end will be a big part of the passing game. I think Antonio Pierce also said that the offense will go as the tight ends go. So if Brock Bowers makes an immediate contribution and he's immediately inserted into the offense as a playmaker on consistent downs and Michael Mayer along with him, I think that that can really open up the offense for guys like Devontae Adams and Trey Tucker and Jacob Glines on the outside. Because remember, if you have a pass-catching athletic tight end, there could be mismatches all over the field. Oh, yeah. And then the Raiders can, and oh, yeah. can feel very unique offense where you have two tight ends who can contribute a lot in the passing game. And to have those mismatches all over the field can give defenses fits, and I would look out for that. Yes, and those tight ends, by the way, if they go off in a big way, not just Bowers, which obviously he's the most talented, but also Michael Mayer, if they do that, that helps out the quarterback significantly, right? Because like you said, there's mismatches. You can get the ball off fast, quick right? Depending on where they're at. So, so a big one. So uh, Ryan and Fullerton, man, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. All right. The last caller of the day is our good friend, Dominique out in St. Louis, Missouri, the show me state. Here we go. Hey, Scott and Moses, is Dominique from the show me state. Uh, just listen to your last episode here. Mo, um, I've got the perfect solution, I believe, um, for 
There was a young D tackle, nose tackle, uh, by the name of Siaki Ika. <laughs> He's 23 years old, 6'3", maybe 335. And the Browns released him. Um, he was drafted in the third round, the 23 draft. Big nose tackle can help us, you know, with the run issues. And also, John Jenkins is up there in age. I know you were saying as well, the greatest need, we need a young, um, you know, nose tackle that we can develop and have around for quite some time. This guy, Siaki Ika, will be the perfect guy. Um, I actually wanted the Raiders to draft him uh, in the 23 draft. And, of course, we did, but I was, I was huge on him. Um, I don't know why the Browns have released him just after one year, but I think he would be the perfect guy to bring in and kind of groom and just let him develop. Let me know what you guys think. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dominique. Appreciate the call as always. Yeah, Ika's a guy, a third round pick. He reminds me of some of the players you've seen recently cut from the Raiders, which is a guy who comes out of college, looks really good. He had 48 tackles and eight sacks as an inside player at Baylor. And then in Cleveland last year, just was not, there was no impact. There was, he just had no impact and they soured on him pretty quick and, and they let him go this year and they didn't sign him in the practice squad either. So he's still out there. So there's guys like that who maybe sometimes it's just not the right situation. They get a fresh start. Um, we'll have to see if if Tom Telesco agrees. So really quick, Dominique, and I remember Dominique's previous calls, always a very insightful caller with, with solutions. I like that. Uh, Siaki Ika, I, what I will say, 350 pounder. This could remind a lot of people of Andrew Billings. Now, when Siaki ah. Ika was, was released, a lot of Browns fans go, said, oh, you know, Andrew Billings was getting pushed around, big guy, but getting pushed around against the run. And that's the same reason that the Browns some reportedly got rid of Siaki Ika was that he was getting pushed around the line of scrimmage. But as you said, sometimes you go to a new environment, you get different results. And I think it's comparable to Andrew Billings because when Andrew Billings was let go by the Browns, the same things were said about Andrew Billings. Gets pushed yeah. around, went to the Raiders. Now, the Raiders didn't retain him, but when he was with the Raiders for that year, pretty Did good well. against the run. And I think mm -hmm. a fresh, uh, you know, new scenery for some players, maybe perhaps Siaki Ika, he could, uh, can rebound. But I find it very interesting that the Browns let go their third round of defensive tackle after their second year. Ra the Raiders let go their young defensive tackle in his second year. Uh, it's kind of like almost maybe they could swap. Who knows? Just swap them uh, out. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> just swap them out. Maybe they both need a uh, new scenery. But I, I definitely will keep an eye for Siaki Ika because, uh, as, as Dominique said, Big nose tackle, about 350 pounds. May just need a new team to reinvigorate his career. Yep. All right. Well, that's it. We're out of time, Mo. Before we go, real quickly, though, I know you, if you're listening to us on the podcast feed, not on the radio because you'll be hearing us on, on Sunday, but uh, Mo, I know on Friday you have an appearance once again on television. You got your makeup people coming in and limo <laughs> coming to pick you up. Uh, tell everybody about that so they can watch. All right. So if you're, if you're listening today, um, look out for me. This evening, 5.30, Pacific, 5 .30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific Time on TNT Sports with Coy Wire. Coy Wire is a former NFL player of the Falcons and the Buffalo Bills. We'll talk some NFL topics. I'll try to sneak a Raiders topic in there. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll be on there every third, every Monday and Thursday, same time, Eastern Time, Pacific Time. And also, also, Bleacher Report Live, the first Bleacher Report Live Focusing on the regular season on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. I'll have a sports night piece up as well, breaking down the Chargers Raiders matchup. And we'll remind you of the, the Bleach Report live again next week on our Tuesday show because it'll be the next day. So it'll be nice and fresh. In case they forget, Mo, we got to make sure we stay on top of them for that. So, by the way, please try to get a Tanner Muse mention in. Um, <laughs> I can't promise we, you that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Silver and Black today. My friend Mo, take care, buddy. We'll see you next time. Talk to you soon. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, for our executive producer in Las Vegas on the radio, that is Mark Bonilla. I am Scott Cobranson from Mo Moten. We will see you guys all early next week here on Silver and Black today. Have a great one.